my partner and I participated in the latest universal uh, global meditation um, that was put out by uh, Nia Peoples, Dr. Bruce Lipton, and Dr. Rashid A. Buttar. I had seen this video pop up in my feed, and um, I was not familiar with Dr. Buttar, um, but Nia Peoples being on the video actually uh, got my attention because she was someone that I liked in my more childhood years. And I was wondering, what's Nia Peoples doing on a video with Dr. Bruce Lipton? This looked like something, uh, you know, spiritual or scientific or something. So it piqued my interest and I, I looked at it. So just that in of itself raises two things. Um, but the, the first issue is all of these uh, global, let's get together and meditate, let's uplift the vibration of the planet, which is something I agree with, something I love, generally speaking, uh, because we, uh, as humans on this planet, are not living the way I believe we were intended to live, which is sp as spiritual beings, very powerful, uh, divine emanations of God who can influence uh, our lives and the physical environment around us, our physical bodies, um, far more and in far more uh, natural, um, uh, energetic ways than the way that we're living right now. Um, so that particular video uh, uh, invited everyone to meditate at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. over a 48-hour period, uh, yesterday, Saturday, and today, Sunday, um, Sunday, April 19, 2020. So, I just wanted to reiterate the point that I had made in my prior video about this, uh, this idea of global unity. Um, when anyone looking at the news, anyone just seeing from their own personal experience, if you're living in a marginalized community or if you pay attention to marginalized communities, that we are not in this together and there is no real global unity. So yes, on the one hand, that's the reason for these meditations. But on the other hand, for me personally, what I infused my intention uh, in my meditation with was the idea that we not only see this kumbaya, holding hands, we all love each other, but this recognition and this understanding that we are willing to be new people, a new race of humans who do not look at color and uh, uh, ethnicity, background, language, creed, you know, race, false race, uh, as anything real other than cultural and how it informs us culturally. We don't hold those things against one another. And in, do, in seeking this unity, we seek to be people who see one another for the light beings that we are, the heart that we are, the beauty that we are, uh, the, perhaps even the stage of development that we are spiritually, but not in terms of physical and false differences that do not matter. That's a really huge point because so many people uh, you know across the the generations in multiple spiritual traditions talk about these issues talk about peace global peace how do we create peace bring bring peace to the planet that can't happen when people are still harboring a love for differences a love for their own group people who behave the way they think people should behave, people who do the things that they think people should be doing, and not other people who are seen as, as too different, too strange, wanting to change the culture, wanting to change our way of life, wanting to change our country. Um, what, there's no way for us to save humanity, for us to come into any type of unified existence that's truly peaceful, where we share resources uh, and, and, and take care of the planet and take care of one another unless we actually want to eliminate those types of differences. And I don't think that most people really take the time to think about what that means and what that looks like. You know, having the, the, 
the racist white neighbor or even the prejudiced black neighbor or Hispanic neighbor or Asian neighbor. And you actually have to talk to these people. You're dependent on these people for your food, for your nourishment, for your survival, for your children's survival. You know, not just a question of tolerating one another, but actually being in a place of understanding and appreciating one another, loving one another. We have to have conversations with one another. We have to understand one another's cultures in order to live in that manner. So I hope people get that point. And in, you know, your personal meditations, you actually think through, a, you know, a, a mental exercise of if I had to talk to that blowhard person at work, if I was dependent on that person I really don't like engaging with and I had to deal with them for my survival, what would that look like? Really go through that exercise in your mind. And when things come up in your heart and in your emotions that say, oh, absolutely not, I'm not dealing with that. Well, now that's something for you to work through. That's something for you to question yourself and say, is this where I draw the line and I'm willing to die? Is this where I draw the line and I'm willing for my children, my family to die? Because that's really where we are, honestly. Another point I'd like to make on this is that people seem to believe that these global meditations on peace and the shifting of the vibration of the planet will lead to a, an up-leveling of our DNA, an up-leveling of our consciousness. Uh, that will be a, a massive shift in who we are as human beings and how we express on the planet. Uh, that is a hope that I, I look forward to, I would like to experience, and I have a certain level of belief in it. However, for anyone who thinks that this up-leveling in our consciousness, in our DNA, is also going to cause us to just drop all of our prejudices and suddenly have complete love and care for all of our neighbors and everyone around the world, and we just naturally have this tremendous love and connectedness that we feel, while I do believe that that will happen or, or could happen to a certain extent, I don't think that the habituated beliefs and emotions that we have within us are just simply going to melt away. You know, we live in a reality where we have to do the work the same way that we have to till the soil and tend to the plants in order to eat and survive. We have to take care of our inner thoughts and beliefs and emotions, and we have to do the work to really sift through those things and choose what is it that we want to keep and what is it that we want to drop away. And even though there may be this amazing heart swelling uh, of, of connectedness that we feel more strongly as a result of up-leveling our consciousness and up-leveling our DNA, that doesn't mean that we're not still going to have uh, leftover habitual patterns that will recreate themselves in some sort of new world. So I just wanted to in, just, re, just harp on that point because people may think that, oh, all of this is unnecessary, thinking that you have to think about the people you don't like. That's just going to magically disappear because that's the whole point of our meditation. That's the whole point of our raising our vibration and shifting the reality of the planet. I, I just, I, I don't believe it. And I think we'd be doing ourselves a disservice to um, not do the work and instead spiritually bypass and think that something else is going to do the work for us. We always have to do the work. We have to feel through what it is that we genuinely care for and want and desire. And we are beings of manifestation. So we need to do the work to sift through what we really imagine so that we are imagining a reality that is genuinely beautiful and accepting and 
you know, intermingling in a beautiful way for everyone. If we don't engage in that struggle now when it feels uncomfortable and we're not able to manifest at the blink of an eye, just imagine how we can mess everything up later. I mean, it probably won't be that drastic. I don't believe it would be. But the point is, don't spiritually bypass. Really think about the reality that you want to create. Really think about this peaceful, harmonized, cooperative reality that we're trying to manifest and really think through how that looks, how we're able to connect with one another and understand one another, have compassion for one another, be grateful for one another, and really no longer experience uh, a, a, a love for differences that keep us separate and keep us feeling that we're better than someone else because of some old paradigm. That's really what it is. We really want to destroy, completely dissolve the old paradigm that keeps us separate from one another. That's what I wanted to say. So I hope you all receive that and understand it and actually take that into your lives and engage in that practice. Ashe. Okay.